All right. So good afternoon, everyone. Uh, thanks for being here. Thank you, Thomas, for uh, uh, being with us today. And also thank you for those connected online. Um, so today we have with us uh, Thomas Ott. He's um, head of uh, Attitude and Orbit Control Systems, Guidance Navigation and Control on Flight Dynamics in Airbus Defense and Space at Lake, Lake Constance in Germany. Uh, he's also senior specialist in attitude pointing and system performance for spacecraft. And before, before his career uh, brought him to Airbus, uh, where, where he joined in 20, uh, 2013, he was at the Swedish Space Corporation, the European Space Agency, and the University of Stuttgart. Um, he has been working during his career as GNC engineer, Radius Navigation and Control Engineer on various uh, missions like METOP, Athena, Euclid, and IIL spacecraft with high precision pointing requirements. Uh, precision pointing control design and system performance analysis is his primary field uh, in research and development. <clears throat> it's worth uh, mentioning that uh, Thomas is an uh, industrial supervisor or co supervisor of, of Allison, and they are working together with Andres in advanced control uh, design modeling. So thanks very much for being here today, and the floor is yours. Thank you very much. Okay. Um, yeah, thanks for being here. It was a spontaneous opportunity that I took um, when we talked with Andres two weeks ago that I will come by here because I just uh, gave a training here in, in Airbus in Madrid. Um, and I was thinking about what could be the, the most interest for you. Um, and as I'm the industrial supervisor of, of Alison, I thought, I give you an industrial perspective, so um, what do we use in industry and why it is for us so important to work with academia in institutes to bring in the know-how because for me this is key that we work together, that we work together um, to um, say build the next generation of spacecraft, to enable them, but also to address uh, say the, the, the market where you look into cost savings, yeah? so there also advanced methods are, are needed these days. And so what, I, what I'm looking, uh, what, we, what we will talk about today is uh, spacecraft system performance. And I will go into, into modeling. How do we model this in industry? Um, how do we, what kind of metrics are for us important for the, um, for the spacecraft system performance? And then I will give a brief outlook in towards how do we analyze this and how can you use this for design. And this is maybe also then, or hopefully also for you, uh, there's here and there some interesting ideas yeah, to see. I will point out where there are needs in industry. Yeah? And um, there might also be things for you um, that you can use for your research um, where I try to include some, some interesting, uh, say, uh, yeah, uh, technical um, technical methods or, or, or tools, yeah. Um, introduction, and I will keep this short just that you know where I come from. Um, so I'm, I'm in, the, in the AOCS GNC in Flight Dynamics in Airbus, so we are international organized. Um, we are at uh, three sites uh, mainly, um, so here in Madrid not. There's a small team that might involve soon, so we are in Friedrichshafen at Lake Constance in France uh, and also in, uh, in the UK. Um, and uh, we basically work as uh, in, in several projects as one team, so sometimes we have teams spread a, a across the sites. Yeah. And I'm uh, the, the head of department of uh, the first one here, and I represent also AOCS, GNC, and Flight Dynamics for Germany um, as a whole. Um, when you then, our department, yeah, what, what do we do? So in, for, for the context, uh, uh, before we go to the te technical challenges, um, so in our department, so they say the core tasks yeah, is uh, AOCS, so attitude and orbit control systems for satellites, for spacecraft, um, GNC. Yeah, so when you ask uh, what is the difference, why do you say not to all GNC? Yes, GNC is the larger one, guidance, navigation and control, and AOCS is then for satellites. Yeah? So you can see it this way. So we should actually put reverse the name, but this is how it is. It grew like this in history. So um, then mission analysis, this is what we also do. Um, we look into uh, these days very challenging constellations, large constellations, um, and, and autonomy in this respect. Then flight dynamics, um, this is how you control the spacecraft to stay on the orbit. Uh, challenges are electric propulsion, 
uh, and so on to, to keep the orbit very, very tight uh, and to know where you are. And then we also do the hardware management of the hardware that is there. And here basically, um, in, we have done in the past any kind of, uh, say, orbits or interplanetary missions or landers. Yeah? Like we were also part of uh, uh, Rosetta yeah? when, we, when you think about uh, interplanetary uh, missions. Um, and besides this, we have some special topics. We have, say, um, system, system level analysis, which we will go uh, today into. So where we look into what is at the end you're interested in, not only what your AUCS, your GNC system has for performance when you're interested, what the complete satellite has a p as a performance, because what you want to know at the end is you, you have a customer that asks you to fulfill, he wants certain images for a certain quality, and you need to build the spacecraft such that you make uh, these uh, images, and the customer doesn't care how you do this, he wants it. So um, this is, in, in, a in AOCS, we are used to do model-based design. So we also entered in this system level analysis with our methods uh, to, to do this more rigorously as in the past. Yeah? When, say in the past, you did it with tables and, and threw numbers together. So not very academically correct yeah? and not mathematically correct. We use our advanced methods to also bring it on system level to do it for the complete satellite. And this is what I will address today. Then there are topics like sloshing. Yeah, I um, I heard that uh, you also have here uh, a group that is working on fluid dynamics. Yeah, it's a big topic. You imagine you have the big satellites. You will see later we have 400 kilograms of uh, of fuel, and we carry it until the very end. And then we need to deorbit this in a stable way so that we know the spacecraft comes down where it needs to come down. Um, and uh, micro vibrations is a big topic. Uh, when you, if you want to observe something very precise, you need to um, also be able to analyze uh, small vibrations coming from cryo coolers or similar. Um, and then, of course, uh, we we always look out for innovative methods here. Um, so we are working also um, with uh, yeah. Uh, what is now the, the buzzword uh, also on, on, on AI that, that we use, but only where it is suitable, because I think the problem needs to be suitable for AI. And here with, with Andres, for example, on advanced filter and control design, where we go beyond what industry um, is uh, using at the moment, so where we try to bring in, to spin in from university, from institutes, technologies. Um, then I don't want to go more in, more in detail. Um, here you see there's a long history of the department, but I'm not here to advertise the department. I'm here to <laughs> give you a technical talk. Um, and um, but w one last thing to emphasize: um, what, why I said it's, it, you can see that we are really interested in working closely with academia and institute is. We have we are a team of around uh, 35 people. We have uh, four, four PhD candidates. We will soon have six that work with us, integrated in the department. We have per year we supervise around 10 students, um, and I think this is quite significant. Yeah, and we also have we we, and we we foster or enforce our technical career so that people can grow from specialist to senior specialist to expert, and then even beyond to senior expert. So, um, and I think this is key to, to do this because we are, we are a, a, say, a, a field within Airbus uh, where we have, a, say, a wide range of competences um, that are wi more than 100. If you, it depends, of course, on the grouping, how you put them together. Yeah? But uh, they are, we are unique. That's it about the department, about me. I have worked there as a GNC engineer since 2013. Now, since last year, I'm the department head. I uh, uh, worked in this area also as a, as a specialist, now as a senior specialist. Um, and um, yeah, and now we will come to the topic. A um, lot of information on this slide, but it, to see you, what, to, for you, what are the challenges and why is system performance so important? I mean, what we see here in the middle is the image motion. Yeah, you have, uh, and for the image motion, what is important is to understand what are your actuators, what kind of disturbances do you have, how do your sensors work, and then also look into the micro vibrations and the propellant and uh, sloshing, and then do the control design, taking all this into account and get here the best uh, the, 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 the image motion possible. Yeah, to have uh, the highest quality of your image, and. Um, we, we work here on the left side on the onboard algorithms, but we model the complete system where we are here on in discrete time and here we are in continuous time. So, and in this we have to also take into account in our, in our analysis and this is also when it comes to advanced methods, 
usually a challenge uh, to, to do this right. Um, in here, this is where Alison is working on, this is Athena. So one challenge in Athena, what, what is specific in Athena, we have a 15 meter spacecraft, we have seven tons, and we have a one ton mirror that we move with a hexapod, and then we have 15 meter of solar arrays, and you can imagine to control this uh, with a high accuracy, you need to model it right, you need to have a good understanding of your system to do this good and to have an overall performance where you want to detect single photons, X-rays coming in, and you want to say precisely where they came from because you want to reconstruct the image um, of, uh, of where you have uh, looked at. Um, then LISA, another mission we work on at the moment where, we want where, where gravitational waves shall be detected. There are, you have three spacecraft that are millions of kilometers apart yeah, they have a laser link among them, yeah, and it needs to be stable, and you want to detect uh, um, signals, yeah, and have a very low noise level with accelerations uh, below uh, 10 to the minus feet, uh, 14 meters uh, divided by uh, a second square, um, which is here in, in uh, this is a PSD uh, um, uh, unit. And uh, this, is, this is quite challenging and also here, I mean, an enabler is uh, what uh, advanced control methods, advanced modeling methods to predict your system performance that you have to really come up with these graphs and say, actually, my behavior will be below this requirement here. Um, and uh, this, is, this is what we're preparing at the moment. Other thing is fast slew maneuvers, what we see here. You have a, a constellation of satellites taking radar images um, and this constellation is meant to take uh, say images in, in, in resolutions better than tens of centimeters, yeah, a few tens of centimeters and um, here at the same time rotate fast because this, this satellite when it flies over the earth like uh, we, we have for, you know, when you see your Google images and you have your 3D images of your um, of your uh, buildings yeah, um, in uh, visible light. You can also have this in radar. And um, this is what is done by looking on the Earth and rotating and look at the same spot while you fly over it. So you need to rotate your spacecraft fast. You think three degrees of second might be slow, but normal spacecraft are in 0 0.1 degrees of second. And to make this in three degrees per second, you use so-called control moment gyro. So you, you use the gyroscopic effect um, to control your spacecraft. And then here on the side is, they say, what we could call classical um, EO missions. But here there are other challenges like for deorbiting. So we have to decrease uh, debris, uh, or avoid that up there we have a lot of space debris. So we need to carry this fuel with us to deorbit the satellite. And this is for a satellite of a few of, say, three, four tons has 400 kilograms of, of fuel to have to be carried until the very end. And you see here crazy flexible modes due to this um, that we have to able to, to manage yeah, um, when we deorbit the satellite. Um, this is rather classical. Not, not, I will not say much uh, to it. And then on the other hand here uh, is uh, also what I mentioned before, we have landers where we do hazard detection um, or avoidance uh, and then avoidance where we are autonomously on the surface of an asteroid and we have an, 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 KI, uh, an AI algorithm uh, running uh, on board and, and to say um, where do I land and where can I not land and take decisions where to fly next. Yeah, so I hop on the surface of such an asteroid. So you see everywhere there are different challenges of system performance and now the question is how do I do it right and in the past it was done all the sub-disciplines they have done very accurate analysis. Yeah. Uh, they gone into into, de into details, and then on system level, this was not uh, properly put together, and this is the next step that we want to do. Um, where I come to the to the actual topic, so spacecraft system performance, modeling, metrics, analysis, and design. Um, it's it's a it's in here. I put together what kind of topics are involved when you have to consider system performance. Yeah, it starts from you have on the one hand the payload uh, system engineers looking at it. You have system performance engineers is the central one that has to coordinate everything. The prime system engineering. You have the system requirements. You have to flow them down. You have to manage the. You have to here you have a tool yeah, to to 
to um, uh, model this and the pointing of the satellite is the crucial one. It's how the satellite, the motion is, will determine your overall system performance and therefore you need to, um, first of all, have good knowledge of your sources, have an, an accurate analysis method, you have to think about how you calibrate all this, you do system identification or you do source identification or system identification, you have some mathematical elements to model this and you have, some, have to have some very good metrics that we will look at. And um, no, it's not moving. Now, so what I said, the core is the pointing, this part, and now we want to take this satellite and model it, and model the complete satellite, not only the AOCS system, but everything, everything that, that impacts uh, system performance. Yeah, because what, what do we want to guarantee? When this satellite flies over the Earth and it takes images, so it scans along the track, across the track, stereo imaging that I mentioned before, or it revisits with two different bands the same spot on Earth and you put the pictures on top of each other that you, you want to have a certain accuracy. Um, so you have two things. Um, you have the, the performance, yeah, you have your satellite here, um, you have your line of sight, and what you want is you have the and then you have the actual performance and you have the your measured and estimated performance and what is usually done and, 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 and not really done properly and uh, then analyzed very in detail but not understood is if it is performance or if it knowledge if it is knowledge yeah so this is something we need to keep in mind is it performance or is it knowledge so is it the actual where I actually look or is it the measured one yeah and this will change drastically um, how you do your design uh, on system level and what kind of uh, performance you will get at the end. So here, here we see it. Um, so when we talk about pointing, what is pointing? Pointing is, so we, we abstract the satellite by, by its coordinate frame, which is here in this, in this green, uh, green vectors. Um, and then you have your reference frame where it should point and it rotates out of this reference frame and you will get some depointing. And we call in. Uh, we call for the for the spacecraft. We say we have this line of sight error, yeah, where this line of sight error is this half cone error here, and that usually determines uh, is 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 um, how good is your your system performance. Um, what is it at the end? It's nothing else. It's a direction cosine matrix. You can do a small angle approximation, and then you can work you can work with a vector. Yeah. So when you have a vector, then you are there. Then you can do you can use your math. You can work with with a with a vector, and uh, you you can do uh, your modeling. You can do your system transfer by not transferring a complete matrix to the system, but you work with this vector, and this is small angle, so it's fine as long as you stay say below five degrees. You have an error that is smaller than than one percent. And um, what is your line of sight? Your instantaneous line of sight is is this here, yeah. Your x and y axis are squared, and then this is square root of it. Um, careful um, when you characterize your motion around the axis in terms of variances already, and then you use this you use this formula. This will be wrong. Yeah. So um, this is good for simulation, but this is not good when you say I have a motion around one axis, and I say the power of this motion has a certain variance. You use this formula. This is this is not this is not accurate. Let's go a bit more in detail. Let's look at the Metop second generation satellite. Um, so you have the satellite here. It has a rotating instrument on the top, a rotating one on the bottom, and several other instruments. You look on Earth, and while you fly along the Earth, the instrument is rotating, and it's taking one, one sample after another to assemble such an image here, yeah, out of different samples. Now. How do I constrain something like this if I have something uh, uh, that I want to put a requirement on this? Yeah, so the, um, to have a certain quality of this image, so that there are no gaps between the samples, yeah, and that the sample itself is um, is very accurate. Well, to have no gaps between this here, so we we can look at the time series of the pointing error. Yeah, this is only one uh, one axis or a scalar here. We look at the motion. Yeah, and we say, okay, there's a time window, this is the first sample. Time window, second sample. And now I could go on here on this side and draw all of them. And then such an image will have a certain number of samples. And then I have a stability time from the first sample to the last one. Yeah? And let's assume in between here are several samples. Um, and now I can, I can define 
a metric that directly, when I apply to such a signal, um, can tell me um, that when the first sample is stable to the last sample, all the samples in between will be stable to each other within a, a value that is smaller um, than I, that I, I would like to have it. When I take this and I transform, I can take such a time window, the stability time, and another time window, where I and and subtract it. So it's the then it's the the difference between the two mean values, and I transform this in the frequency domain. I get a filter. I get a metric filter that is accurate. Yeah, and this accurate metric filter, I have the stability time here between my first window and my last window is this corner of this of this uh, filter. And uh, the the time of the of the first uh, of the first window, uh, or the window time itself, yeah, it's it's the corner frequency here, more or less one over this window time, yeah. It's uh, so. And then what you also see, it's um, it's the magnitude of four. Why we are on the power level, so we have the signal squared, and what you consider is peak to peak. So you have an excursion to uh, positive and negative, and you want to constrain this because you want to ensure that at the end all these samples here they don't have too much overlap, but there are also no gaps. Yeah. So you, you what you can do is uh, there exists a metric, and I put the references later. We will look in this in detail. Um, that can evaluate you exactly this when you have a signal modeled in the frequency domain as a power spectral density, as an amplitude spectrum, or, or, or so on. Uh, and this is nice because this you can use for control design, this you can use for analysis, um, and not only control design, it means any signal, uh, any signal you can analyze with this um, uh, to do so. On the other hand, when we look at the satellite, what kind of what kind of disturbances do we do we expect in the satellite, and which kind of um, which kind of frequency ranges do we have? And this is also a challenge. Um, we have here here we look at the dynamic effects. Yeah, first look at the dynamic effects. So there is a coupling from the attitude and orbit control system to the solar array, then to an instrument. This is an instrument. This guy is a scatterometer, is a radar. Those are these two antennas sticking out here. The solar array drive mechanism, you have a solar array that is rotating, so this is um, introduced, it has some certain dynamics. Then there is a coupling between this uh, drive mechanism and uh, the instrument, then the instrument and the solar array, because these instruments are rotating, instrument and, 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 and another instrument, and, the, and then some in inherent instrument uh, disturbances. Um, those you have to all, you have to model, you have to understand, and they are usually below so 10 hertz uh, uh, yeah in the, at least in this mission now we have interdisciplinary pointing error source so that means um they are when we say interdisciplinary we we organize us in in certain disciplines and and what we analyze in the AUCS is not necessarily uh, are not the, the sources that they analyze in, in other disciplines so but to have a complete picture we see here we go when the sources we go from zero from 0.1 hertz or even from 0, 0 hertz to, to 1 kilohertz. So micro vibrations are here. And we have, when we do system performance, we have to be able to analyze everything from 0 to 1 kilohertz. Yeah, to do this in a simulation is impossible. You run forever the simulation and you will not get the results. Yeah? So we need to find a way to do this in, a, in an analytic way uh, and to, 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 model it, uh, to model it such that we can do so. And this is the challenge, yeah, to go from zero to one to one kilohertz. And here, just here, I put some pointing error sources. Uh, what what are the groups? But okay, this is not so 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 important. So what do we do? We take the satellite, we build, we we model it. Yeah, we say we have these pointing error sources. We have system transfers in between. This can be thermal. This can be our control loop, yeah, to control the attitude of the spacecraft. This can be some uh, structural. Um, Structural modes of the system, and this you bring you bring here in in your overall system model. What is this all? Yeah, this we saw at the beginning. Yeah, but there's more to it. It's not only image motion. So system performance is also made up of um, of other uh, sources. Yeah, um, when we see here the ones coming from from the optical design where you have mechanism control, misalignments, you have op from the optical design, the surface manufacturing errors, you have here thermoelastic deformations. I heard you had a talk on thermoelastic uh, this week. Um, 
they are um, influencing my, my final system performance. You have some moisture release. So also uh, by sp in spacecraft, when you have some moisture release, your structure will change and it will, and will, it will impact your performance. Um, you have some here some manufacturing in terms of uh, for the instrument effect and then the image motions that come from this side here. How do you model all this? Um, and this is what we see here. Um, what we do is we said, okay, we need something that is responsive enough on system level and accurate enough, yeah, because a full-time si uh, system simulation is 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 an overdue, yeah. So um, you you cannot uh, do a design uh, with with if you model everything in detail. So we looked at models that uh, can represent the overall system performance. So important in, in this respect is so we work with normal with, with dif different distributions, yeah, like here a normal distribution as an example. But we also say, okay, what we have also effects where you have a, a distribution, a noise on in orbit, the temperature changes, changes, the noise changes. So what do you need to do? You need to give also the variance of the of the um, normal distribution you give a distribution between uh, uh, temperature bounds yeah so it's a uniform distribution that uh, changes uh, the the gaussian distribution uh, variance yeah or we have several periodic signals or almost periodic signals where we say we cannot characterize them we will not characterize them um, we accept that they are error sources, so we model them here as, as periodic signals, so this is quite standard. Then uh, some drifts that are reset after a while because you do some calibration, so you need some way to um, model also drift, yeah, um, which can be as a first assumption some uniform distribution, yeah, if you take this, this error, it's a uniform distribution from uh, until it resets, or you go in the frequency domain, and this is our preferred way to go, yeah, is you work with power spectral densities. You characterize uh, your noise sources and all your sources that you have on system level with power spectral density um, to compile, or at the end, to, uh, to compile an overall view on how is your pointing behaving. And um, when you go over here, some, some other examples on, yeah, here's a, another distribution when you have biases, that are distributed because when you build your spacecraft, you have some tolerances. At the end, you will get one spacecraft, and this spacecraft will surely not have, um, say, the alignment that you want to have it. It will have some alignment, but it will stay constant once it is in orbit. Yeah, this alignment. But you don't know where it is. You can measure it, but also up to a certain accuracy only. Um, down here, there are what we call, uh, what we said here, general periodic signals. Yeah, you have certain effects where you have some transient effects that you would like to model on system level because, for example, you go from uh, you go from the from the shade to the sun, yeah, and uh, you will have some thermal transients. Um, or you have here what we see in reaction wheels. We see uh, steps and spikes. So the reaction wheel friction is not constant, and even steps and spikes in reaction wheels impact the pointing so it, it the, the the friction changes with steps and spikes and you need to model this and consider this somehow yeah so when you have done this so we have a set of models that we can use um, on on so on system level to to um, model the complete spacecraft then we go we have we look into what kind of error indices are there what could be asked from us that we design against yeah, and what we see here, we see these time windows from the beginning where we had already an example, but in a more general form, where we say we have a, cert we have a time with that is the center of this time window. We have the time window itself, the length. We have a stability time. Um, we also have a position within the time window that is given here. Um, and now you can derive a set of, of, of error indices yeah, that are interesting, that are directly related to some payload needs to some, um, that you have to, uh, to guarantee a certain performance uh, of, your, of, your, um, of your spacecraft. So there's this, the APE performance, so this is basically only the, so the, the, black, uh, the black curve here. Yeah, no, knowledge is the same, but would be a different signal here. Then you have the MPE, yeah? this is a mean performance error, which is, say, the mean value here. And if you take the mean value of this window, this and this, the mean value will shift. So it's the moving average. Yeah? This is what we call the, the MPE. You have um, 
you have here something that we will come to later. This is a, a, a linear drift. You can characterize a linear drift within one time window, which is important for optical payloads. Um, they want to minimize this drift, and, and uh, this you can, you can handle with this metric here. Um, and what you have at the end, when you subtract from this signal all the other metrics, yeah, you will end up with something that is similar to random process noise. Um, and this is then when you, when you have this error metric here. Or you have the one that we talked about before, when you want that one window is stable with respect to another window. So now you have this all written here in instantaneous errors, but what you would like to have, you would like to have some metrics. So when, you use, when we use our models, we, 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 we model our, so we have our error source models, we have our system models. Um, then we would like to characterize this and evaluate with a, with a clear metric. Yeah? Um, and this exists. So now we go towards metrics, and metrics um, in on for pointing usually relate to a power, to a variance. So we see here, we see here the the different variances for the error indices that were introduced on the slide before. You see here the um, the, the 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 metric for the for the for this absolute pointing error, which is uh, solely uh, the pointing error minus the the mean value and then take the, the expected value, so you get the variance. So th this is pretty standard. And in the frequency domain, uh, we know this is uh, when you integrate over the power spectral density, you get this variance. Um, then for the windowed mean, um, you, we take the expression before and we take the expected value and we subtract the mean value of the overall signal. But then there's a nice uh, link to the frequency domain. You can take a weighting filter in the frequency domain that you can derive. So you, if you have your PSD and you, um, you apply this metric filter, you directly get this variance. You don't need to simulate. It's just uh, one computation, one analytic computation, and you get your variance. Yeah. So you don't need to simulate and run over your time series to do this evaluation. So And this metric then gives you also the means to do design and uh, later on. And the same you can do for all the others, yeah, where here there is in, uh, in the time domain a clear metric which is defined over the expected value, taking the expressions that we had before. And then in the frequency domain for all of those, there are filters that you can use to quantify um, the performance on for your overall system. Um, to, to, to look at this in a more detail, how do the, such uh, filters look like? Here, those are the, the references that you can take. Yeah? There you find the details, you find the derivations uh, in these references. Um, what, uh, what, what we see here, yeah, it's again, here's an MPE, yeah, and the MPE, uh, which is uh, this mean, uh, uh, mean performance error, which is the mean value over a time window, um, is basically nothing else as a, as a low pass filter. Yeah? You can imagine over a time window, everything that I average, all the high frequency will, will be averaged out, and uh, there's the high frequency content will be cut out by this metric filter, and you only have the low frequency content, and it gives you directly. Then you are interested in, um, in the RPE down here which is the motion with respect to the mean value of this, of this time window, then it's a high pass filter because all the low frequencies you're not interested in. Yeah? Because if this is slowly moving in the window, nothing will move, but um, the motion in the window you're interested in, and this is all the high frequencies, so everything that is micro vibrations or, or higher depending on what your window time is. Then there's also... Um, Something that we um, that we dis that we found out lately that is of interest is for some payloads for some um, uh, some quality of some measurements products from some instruments that you put on satellites is that they are interested in that they say they want to have a certain stability between uh, the mean value of a time window and one point in this time window, and this you can derive with metrics here. And um, you see, depending on, uh, say, where this time window is, you get different filters, but they cut out directly the contribution of the error sources that will result in this motion here. And this one we looked at before, which is the stability between one uh, time window mean value to the other time window mean value. 
So you, and here you have this factor of two because it can happen peak to peak. Um, something where you where we can go and in, in, uh, where in addition that that also exists is um, the the window performance drift, yeah, or the segmented drift, is. Um, what I said before, what the image uh, quality people are interested in or for optical instruments is how um, the image is um, linearly moving while observing something. And uh, this can be characterized here um, with this filter on this side here, um, which, is, which you see is basically uh, cutting out uh, this part of the spectrum and then having this, you can you get you get directly this linear motion out of your signal that you have. Yeah. So if this is your original signal, what uh, th how these metrics are derived is basically nothing else as they make they fit here uh, a linear motion uh, to this uh, to this signal, and then uh, sub do a least square fit and subtract. Uh, then the residual of the least square fit is then. Um, what I, what we said before is this uh, windowed performance residual. Yeah, um, this is then the pure red motion here. Yeah, when you subtract uh, the the trend, and you take the bi the bias away, then you have only the uh, the noise motion, and uh, then this is this residual, and this is nothing else as fitting a a, a line to a, to to the signal, so a least square fit of of a line, and then you do all the the math to come up with the filters in the frequency domain. So having these, um, you can you can easily determine um, what is uh, what is your contribution of your error sources that you have um, to um, to your performance to your system performance. Now, um, in an ideal world, you would go and say, I have only power spectral densities, I have amplitude spectrums, I go in the frequency domain, I use these filters, and I work with this. Um, you don't have it. I mean, uh, we don't ha always have the information available. We have inf information that sometimes are only, we get variances, we get mean values, we get, um, uh, then we have the PSDs, we have these transient signals. So um, what 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 is out there and what we have worked on together with the European Space Agency for the last uh, yeah, 10 years, uh, we have to say, and now we have a very mature state, is that we developed a tool which is called the Pointing Error Engineering Tool, um, where you can model on system level, you, you build your model, what you see here, you have a pointing error sources, you take LTE transfer functions, uh, you, build, you build your model, um, you, and then you can analyze it in a tree view, and you get directly not only um, the uh, say uh, what is your contribution in terms of power, in terms of variance, but you also get the distribution of the error. Which is nice because when you have, uh, for example, an optical instrument, your point spread function is of interest, the accuracy of the point spread function, and uh, then it, there is a convolution of the motion of the pointing error with the point spread function, which uh, which kind of uh, the worsens the, uh, or the, the, the point spread function, makes it larger, and depending on which shape uh, your probability density function of your pointing motion has, it will, it will um, change it differently, and so it is of interest to characterize this well, and to do this also fast. And doing this, modeling like this with the models I showed before, which are sufficient, which we have showed also in simulations that our simulations don't, uh, are not so much off from, from this when we use an accurate modeling here. We run this in, in around three minutes. You run a complete assessment of uh, system performance. And uh, then you just put your metrics on top that we looked at before. And you know what is your line of sight motion exactly for this metric. And then from there on you go and you can say what is your image quality, what is your radar quality and um, you have it directly. And um, yeah, so you find this here on, on the right side. I put some links where you find this. Um, interesting, it's also very good documented. There are also publications behind that show what is really in terms of algorithms in, in this tool. Um, and even the documentation is, as, as such is interesting when you have to assess a performance of, of, of any system that you have. Um, now, from there on, so we now we said this is how you analyze it. Um, 
Then we come to um, control system analysis and design. Um, now we can even go further with these metrics. Yeah, here we have these pointing metrics um, that you have at the end. You have here. Um, you have here what this is what Andres is also mainly working on. You have here your LFT, you have your controller, you have your uncertainties in the system, you have your disturbances, performance weights, and then you get your, uh, your metrics come out of this yeah, that we looked at before, your pointing metrics. And what you can do is, what you need to do is, this could be, for example, this MetTop uh, satellite with the sloshing, with the solar array, yeah, which it actually is. Yeah. So this is how the transfer function looks like. This is the uncertain transfer function. So we see here that the modes, they can vary with some uncertainties because we do not know the parameters. Um, you can model this. Yeah. So here is the solar array. You have an antenna that is moving. You have some reaction wheels. So you have a multi-body system resulting in this. You put this here into the plant um, and you just plug in at the end your weights and you get directly the performance that you're looking at that is derived from a certain performance of, of image quality um, when, you, when you do this and you can use this also for control design. And then when you run, for example, a mu analysis, you can see um, and you do a cumulative uh, sum of the, of the pointing error, you can see here for the upper and lower bound um, how uh, your performance will be considering uncertain parameters in the system and um, this is what we are actually interested in. Yeah, This is advanced design and this is something that is uh, not standard in industry at the moment Yeah, but this is where we want to get to that we work exactly like this a rigorous approach modeling a multi-body system with uncertainties bring it generate a transfer function in a systematic way where you have all the uncertainties up here, uh, all the parameters, um, and then you have also accurate metrics here at the end that directly link you to a system performance that is required by image quality, by radar quality, by, uh, by something that for us as an industry the customer is interested in or for you when you want to have an experiment or something uh, that you need to demonstrate. And here some just some references. Some of them are also uh, from, from, from Anders here, um, as he's very strong involved in this. So for us, this is key that we go in this direction for analysis and design. So mu analysis, IQCs, um, or something that is optimization based. Um, yeah. Um, I, inc I included for you uh, several references. I know it was very high level. It was more the intention uh, to bring you ideas, but to show you end-to-end -end in industry how we think, what is needed, um, where in, in, in academia and institutes we see contribution, fields that, that, that can be worked on, and maybe you took some ideas and here you find uh, the necessary, say, uh, or some publications that uh, is a starting point uh, to go deeper in, into this. Yeah. So that was it from my side. So um, thank you very much. Um, now I'm here for, for questions we can discuss, or I don't know what is, how is it planned? Yeah.